Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Open Bible Church San Jose Online. We want to welcome you. Right now, we're asking everybody, both online and in person, to check in with us. If you would just take a moment to grab your cell phones and text to the number 408-547-4911. Again, that's 408-547-4911. Text the word CONNECT if you have never checked in with us before. Follow all the prompts. Make sure we have your first and last name. Text the word HERE and your first and last name if you've checked in with us before. We appreciate you doing that. It's a great way to be able to share your prayer requests with us. Text to that very same number the word PRAYER and let us know how we can pray with you. You can also give, especially if you are uh, uh, wholly online and you would like to support the ministry here at San Jose, San Jose Bible Church, you can text the word GIVE and it'll take you to the giving portal on our church website and you can give accordingly. So we appreciate you doing that. Coming up uh, throughout this month, we're gonna be celebrating the harvest. That's our sermon series. And then on the 29th, we're gonna have a, a grand day of celebration, celebrating the harvest. And we're gonna talk about what that looks like over the course of these next three or four weeks. So God bless you. We'll just take a minute and we're gonna invite the worship team to come. And we're gonna ask you to join with us as we worship. And then as we start our very first message regarding the harvest. Thank you. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. Louder than the unbelief, I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is
Welcome back, everybody. As I shared with you earlier, we are going to be starting a brand new sermon series for the month of October, uh, appropriately entitled The Harvest. And I can't tell you just how much I really love this season of the year, just because, uh, especially growing up in Iowa, where you could see all four seasons developing, especially in the, in the way of the planting of corn and soybeans the harvesting of those, um, of those crops, and just watching all the in-between from the, from the time of planting to the time of harvesting, and personally being involved in the process of helping those plants uh, achieve their best yields, as, as I would work in the bean fields and, and uh, working in the hay fields and so on and so forth. And so I, I really love to see how the, um, the, the whole process worked. Um, as I look at the four seasons, I look at fall being my favorite and then summer and then spring because it was the preparation for the planting and, and the harvest and, and right before summer. And, and winter usually not so much my, my, my favorite. Only because back in Iowa, you could get some really, really uncomfortably cold, cold winters. And, and I'm not one that really enjoyed the, the cold, which is why I live in California today. But the idea of, of if I were to choose um, which of those seasons would be my favorite, it's, it's fall. And in California, fall is especially a little bit more milder than you would find it in, in Iowa. And so I can really say that when I'm starting to break out my long sleeve t-shirts or my sweatshirts or my, my vests that I wear, um, then I could say it's officially fall and it's officially the time of the year that I really enjoy. And so the, um, the messages as we walk through what this looks like over the next few weeks will hopefully reflect um, how much I love about this, this time of the year, this season. In, uh, in, in the Bible, uh, the harvest is a metaphor for both spiritual fruitfulness as well as judgment. And our productivity in God's kingdom is tied to our faith and obedience in, in where and how and what we plant. And the whole dynamic of planting and harvesting is so closely connected that I'm hoping today to be able to encourage you uh, in your journey with your faith that you'll be able to see where, why some things aren't happening and, and what's the best way to, um, to put yourself in the place of uh, gaining a greater harvest. And so hopefully as we walk and talk through this this morning, you'll be able to see that. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, uh, verses um, uh, one, th excuse me, three uh, through eight, it says this. Um, Jesus told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he scattered his seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. And when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they, with and they were withered because they had no root. Others fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked out the plants. Others fell on good soil, where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what was sown. And Jesus used this uh, parable as a way of explaining how the word of God is planted in our hearts and in our lives. And, and this is probably one of my favorite parables uh, because of the, uh, the, the farming illustration the planting, the harvesting, so on and so forth. And so it was kind of a, uh, a, a, a parable that's, that's kind of dear to my heart. And so as I, as I um, walk us through the message this morning, um, the, Jesus broke down that parable and he talked about each of these different soil conditions, the path, the rocky soil, the, the weeds, and the good soil, uh, in reference to the condition of the soil of our hearts. And when we, we look at the physical plantings, we see where 
the rocks don't allow the, the, the plants to get down deep and grow roots where the weeds will come in and they'll take away, they'll suck away the life and the nutrients from the plant and the plant won't fully grow or develop or grow at all. And then you have the path, the very first one mentioned that where nothing, nothing grows at all. And so the, uh, the, the most favorable illustration is the good soil. And that's, the, that's what I want to focus on this morning is how important it is that we are planting in the right soil. And so the lesson that Jesus is giving here in Matthew chapter 13 is a lesson in how we need to identify the right soil in which to plant. And so there's all kinds of things in our lives. There's a hardening of the heart. There's the rocks of, of just the uh, things that we're dealing with and going with. The, the weeds represent all the different um, activities that we've got going on that are challenging uh, the things of faith that we're trying to, um, trying to establish in our life. And so there's all kinds of challenges that we have in finding the right soil. And so um, as, we, as we try to figure out which is the right soil, the thought that came to my mind had to deal with um, how life change and how important it is that everything that we're doing through our faith is, is leading us towards life change. And that's the good soil versus the path, the rocks, or the wheats. And so I want to make sure that my life is, is moving in the right direction um, as far as my faith is concerned. But the problem is, is, is when you take a moment to pause and look back over your life and you see just the um, same things happening over and over and over and over and, and there's no real life change going on, it's because we're planting in the wrong soil. And we're not getting the right harvest for what we're trying to plant, the seed that we're trying to plant. And in this illustration, the seed's good. It, it's just the ground that we were planting it in is not allowing the seed to fully develop and grow the way that God intended it to grow in our lives. And so the idea of that is, um, have you ever heard of the uh, definition of insanity? The definition of insanity is that you keep doing the same things over and over and over, expecting different results. And that's what, that's what insanity is. When we don't make the changes, you know, when we have an expectation of, of what we want to see in our lives and what we want to do, but we're not doing the right things to make it happen. In other words, we're, we're planting our seeds in the wrong soil. And so this morning, I just want to encourage you to make sure that we understand that change only happens when we're planting in the right soil. And I don't know about you, but I want to reap change in my life. I found it interesting that we just finished a series on the book of Galatians last month. And in the sixth chapter, the very last message I, I shared, I shared out of Galatians chapter six. And I read these verses to you, seven, eight, nine, where it says, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived, Paul wrote. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And the idea of that is, is making sure we are planting the right seeds in the right soil. So not only do we have to plant within the right soil, but we have to plan, plant the right seeds in the right soil. Because you can plant weeds in really good soil and grow really great weeds. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that we have the right soil with the right seeds. And so the, the thought I want you to, um, to think about for us this morning is, is you can't harvest what you don't plant. In other words, if you're not planting the right seeds, you're not going to reap the right harvest. So let me say that in scriptural terms. If you're not sowing the right seed, you're not going to reap the right harvest. And so I don't know about you, but I want my faith to be a reflection of my relationship with Christ. And in order to do that, I need to make sure I'm planting the right seed in the right soil.
So uh, in, in planting uh, and waiting for change and hoping for change and looking for change, harvesting for change, one must strategically prepare for the harvest that this change will bring. In other words, if I'm wanting to change a behavior or a habit, then I need to be planting the seeds in the right soil, the right seeds in the right soil, that are going to help me change that particular behavior or habit. And so it's very specific and it's very, very intentional. What do I mean? So this idea is very specific. In other words, I want to, I want to change something within my heart or in my mind. So let me, let me back up and say this. So when it comes to my salvation, when it comes to my faith in Christ, um, I, I want to change certain parts of me. I want to change my heart, which is my passion, my desires, and the things that I love that are in competition with, with, with God. I want to change my mind. I want to change my thoughts. I, I, I want to make sure that I'm blocking out those thoughts that I shouldn't be thinking I want to make sure my thoughts are going to be positive and not negative. I want to make sure my, my thoughts are proactive and, and always looking for the best or, or forward in what God wants me to do and not, ne and not reactive or defensive to th certain things that, that come up in my life. I, I, I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the bigger picture when it comes to those kind of things. My attitude, I, 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 want, I need to plant Seeds that will change my attitude from a negative attitude to a positive attitude. From angry and sarcastic to joy and on and on and on. So and in this, we have to agree or come to that place in our, in our faith where God's way is better than our own. So I am learning how to surrender my life and, and doing so in order that what I'm harvesting is what God wants to see in my life. So how does this happen? So as I said, it's specific. I talked about my heart, my mind, and my attitude. I have to specifically target that area of change that I want to make. And then I said it was intentional. In other words, I have to plan and prepare and insert into my schedule daily, weekly, monthly, my routine, the things that I need to do and want to see how I want to change. Now I realize that that's pretty vague, and I realize that that's pretty broad stroke of, of a thought, but I, but I think it's really important that we begin there. That we have to understand that in order for this change to occur, it has to be specific. What am I trying to target and in, in, in what I'm trying to grow? See, I just don't throw random seed out in my garden and, and hope that some of those seeds are tomatoes and, and peppers and and uh, eggplant, and squash, zucchini, you know, the things that I like to eat, carrots, onions. You know, I, I have specific seed that I'm planting in the soil, and that's where it's really important for us to understand that, that if we're going to change anything in our life in order to harvest what is right, the harvest of righteousness, then we have to make sure that we're planting seeds of righteousness, seeds of change that can only happen when we are specific and intentional. So the idea of the harvest is the culmination of the preparation. So there's preparation that goes into the harvest of change that I want to see in my life. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 4 says, Sluggards do not plow in season, so at harvest time they look but find nothing. So again, I, I want to make sure that I am preparing properly and correctly and, and it's just not going to happen. I think a lot of times people come to Christ and, and they expect Jesus to wave this magic wand over your life and, and presto bingo, you're going to be changed. You're not going to swear anymore. You're not going to lust anymore. You know, you're not going to sin anymore because, because that magic wand was waved over you. You can forget that. It's not going to happen. What's going to happen is, is you're going to see those areas of your lives. The Holy Spirit will reveal those areas of your lives that, are, that aren't right and need to change. And, and the only way that those things are going to be happening is if you're planting the right seeds in the right soil in order to produce the right harvest. And that can only happen when we're intentional 
And it can only happen when we're specifically looking at the areas of our lives that need to change. So we have to prepare. The harvest is the culmination of the preparation. And the harvest is the reward of the right planting, the right soil, the right seed. So the harvest is a representation of, what you, of, of the soil that you prepared and the seed that you planted. So what does that look like? So you plant corn, you reap corn. You plant righteousness, you reap righteousness. You plant unrighteousness, and you're going to reap the consequences of that unrighteousness. And so what we have to do is make sure we're sowing the right seed in the right soil. You ever heard the expression, oh, they just have to go sow their wild oats? And the idea of that is if you sow those wild oats, you're going to reap the consequences of those wild oats. But if you sow the, the seeds of righteousness, then you will reap the rewards of what that righteousness begins. And, and that's the right, what righteousness is, is right living. Learning how to live according to what God's plan is for our lives. And that's the change that I'm looking to invoke in my life as well as in other lives. I love what Robert Louis Stevenson said. He said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. You won't have to worry about your harvest if you're planting the right seeds. When you're planting the right things in your life for growth and development and, and becoming that person that God wants you to become, then you don't have to worry about the harvest. The harvest is just a natural progression of the law of nature. And, that, and that's a spiritual law as well, that when you plant righteousness, you will reap righteousness in your life. So there's five laws that I want to uh, go over. And uh, before I go into that, um, Mark chapter 8, verses 34 through 37 says this. He called the crowd to him along with his disciples, and he said this. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. So this is, he's targeting the relationship, and, the, and he's, he's telling them to be intentional with how they live this out. Take up your cross daily and follow me. Then he says, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. Well, what is a seed? A seed has to die in the ground before it can spring to life. So when we die to Christ, we will spring to life in his righteousness. And he says, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their only soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? So the dynamic of that is as we bring our lives to Christ, there are five keys that uh, I, I truly believe can help bring about this change that God desires for us. So five laws of the harvest is basically what I'm going to be looking at this morning. Law number one is this. The harvest is limited to the planting. The harvest is limited to the planting. In other words, you can only harvest what you plant. So if you, if you plant uh, beans, you're going to harvest beans. Corn, corn. Tomatoes, tomatoes. If whatever it is that you plant, that's what you harvest. So the harvest is limited to the planting. If you haven't sown it, God can't multiply it. You hear that? Only one of the clearest pictures of multiplication occurs in John chapter 6, where Jesus has 5,000 hungry people before him, and he's got one child with a happy meal, basically. And what he has is, is some, some bread and some fish, and Jesus multiplies it for, and feeds well over fifteen to 20,000 people with that small lunch. So he takes that lunch, those five loaves, those two fishes, and he blesses it and he's able to distribute it. So the miracle demonstrates the, the pattern of multiplication. It's only what you put in the ground... That and that and that alone is the only thing that will grow and multiply. So if God multiplies um, what I have, then we will see that 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 uh, change or that or that growth development that occurs through when we plant the right seed in the right soil. And so that's law number one. The harvest is limited to the planting. Again, when we're specific and when we're intentional and we know what we're planting, then, then that's what we're going to see harvested within our life. Number two, 
The harvest comes after the planting. The hard part about harvesting is that it takes time to see the efforts that you put into it pay off. That's why many people never see a harvest because they start off well, but they give up way too soon. What did, he, what did Paul say in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9? Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. If we do not give up. Um, harvesting is, is not easy, or excuse me, the, the process of, of the planting is not easy. So once I've planted my garden, and I love the garden, so I speak from experience, then comes the work, the hard work, the toiling, the pulling of the weeds, the, the pruning of the, of the plants, and the constant watering day after day after day after day. And then until finally we begin to see the product of our hard work beginning to pay off. But, it, but the harvest doesn't happen right away. It only happens once we, once we started the, the, the planting. See, we live uh, and have lived for a while in the, in the mindset of instant gratification. Our technology is making things happen faster and faster and faster and faster. And so, and so as I, I look at things going on around me when I pray, I'm praying that microwave mentality sometimes, God, I want it and I want it now kind of a thing. And, and I think we fail to realize that the, that the real strength of growth happens over the process of time. You see, these results that we're looking for take time. And so what we sow today, we won't see that return until the next season in life. So sowing is all about the future. And while it's worth the wait, we often, we often struggle with, with that, that time in between the planting and in between the harvest. And Paul says, don't give up because you will see a harvest if you don't give up. So law number three, the harvest is greater than the planting. So we looked at the, uh, the harvest is limited to the planting. The harvest comes after the planting. Number three, the harvest is greater than the planting. And the harvest, what comes back to you is always greater than what you planted or sowed. If you plant a wheat seed, it'll turn into a wheat stalk. And you, that could produce hundreds of wheat seeds. The law of greater says that what starts small multiplies into something much bigger than what you began with. So when you begin to plant seeds of change in your life, you will begin to see this growth exponentially happen in your life. You will become stronger in your faith. You will become more confident. You'll become more bold and courageous in, in how you walk things out. The other day I was talking with a young guy who was homeless, 35 years old, and he was struggling and he, he came through the parking lot and he says, you know, or do you work here? And I didn't really answer him at first. And, and he said, I said, well, what, what do you need? And he goes, man, I need some socks. I need some clothes. I need some food. And typically I send, uh, send people that have that need to some of the shelters, to some of the other locations. But uh, this time I said, okay, let me see what I can find for you. So I found some socks. I found some shirts. Uh, I found a pair of shoes. Um, you know, I, I just tried to, to help him out however I could. I went inside and I made him a, a, a ham and cheese sandwich and I got him some drinks and some fruit. And then I just talked with him for about 20, 25 minutes. And we just talked about his life and, 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 we just, and I asked him questions that sometimes I, I, I shy away from asking because I, I just don't feel comfortable, but <clears throat> I felt bold. And so I began to ask him about his faith. I began to talk to him about Jesus. And, and um, I, he, then, he, then after we were all done, he says, Pastor, you know, can you pray with me? And so I, I, I prayed for him and with him. And, and we got done. He said, man, I guess, Pastor, I just want to pray. And he began to pray. And I mean, he knew what he was praying. So I knew that he had some kind of a faith connection. But life had just taken over. And he was just dealing with his drugs and all the, all the bad choices that he was making. And so we talked about that after he prayed. Another couple of minutes, we just talked about how God brings about life change. And I just want to encourage you this morning that, that the idea of, of when you begin to plant God's word and God, things of God in your life, then your harvest is going to be greater than what you planted. And you have to believe that. You have to hold on to that. 
because I really true that, that it's really important part of our lives to bring about that life change. So what was the old saying? The old saying is we count the apples in a tree, but God counts the seeds in the apple. So when you look at the apples in a tree, you, you can see a tree is filled with, you know, 100 apples. But when God looks at those apples, he sees that that apple is filled with 10 or 15 seeds. So each one of that one apple has the, has the uh, propensity to produce 15 trees. And those 15 trees, more and more and more and more. So when God looks at us, he doesn't see the fact that there's an apple. He sees the fact that there are seeds in that apple that can multiply and grow. When God sees the things in our life that he wants to do, we cannot limit God. You know, oh, I just want to plant this one seed of change in my life. Man, I tell you what, take those seeds in that good soil, those good seeds, and scatter them and let God begin to, to grow exponentially uh, uh, and multiply the things in our life that he wants to do. I don't know about you, but that's what I want to see happen. I want to see the fact that the harvest is greater than the plant. Number four is the harvest is proportional to the planting. In other words, plant one seed, you get one plant, hopefully. Times I've, uh, this year, I've, I, uh, I, my garden struggled a little bit. Times I, and typically what I do is I will um, uh, take my little seedlings that I buy and, and put them in. I tried something different this year. I began to um, take seeds and, and try to... Uh, uh, grow shoots out of it, and then plant those shoots in order to hope. And I got about half of my, of my things, the things that really grew. And if you're from Iowa, you know how dangerous this is. But I planted a bunch of uh, squash and zucchini. It just, it just blew up. My wife says, uh, next year, can you not plant so much uh, squash and zucchini? And so, but the idea of that was I, I wanted to plant a lot in order that I could harvest a lot just in case some of my harvest didn't come through. And that was the case. Uh, I had some plants that grew that produced nothing. I had some that produced maybe three or four. And then I had others that were prolific. And, and I was thankful for that. But I never would have had that if I, if I would have been sparing in how I and what I planted. So plant one seed, you get one plant. Plant a dozen, you'll get a dozen. Invest minimally and you'll reap minimally. Invest greatly. And watch as God brings in a harvest you can't contain. So invest greatly. We reap in proportion as we sow, as we plant. If we sow little, we reap little. But if we sow much, we reap much. The ground we sow, the, excuse me, the, the more ground we sow, the greater harvest we will have. John Maxwell said, if you expect to reap corn when you plant nettles, you're not going to get corn. No matter how much time you spend watering, fertilizing, or cultivating your plants, if you don't like the crop you are reaping, you need to change the seed you are sowing. So that's why we've got to, we, we've got to sow the right seed in the, excuse me, the right soil. And lastly, Law 5 says we can't do anything about this year's harvest, or if we can't do anything about this year's harvest, we can change next year's. Already, my mind is thinking of, of things I'm going to do differently next year. One of the things that I didn't have this year is I didn't have the pollinators in my garden like I've had in the past. Before, I've had bees and butterflies and, and other insects that were taking the pollen and they were spreading it out through the rest of my garden. And man, my garden was just exploding. So this next year, I'm, I'm going to plant wildflowers early and let them grow to attract the pollinators so that as my, as my plants begin to grow, then my, my uh, tomatoes and all the others, the squash, zucchini, don't tell my wife, but all those other plants that I'm going to be putting in there that need pollination, those, those pollinators will take care of that. And I truly believe that my next year's harvest will be even greater than the harvest that I had this year. So you reap today what you sowed yesterday, and I know... Uh, I, I know it's important for you to understand that. If you're living for God today, what, what comes in the way? Man, it's those past mistakes, it's the consequences of our, of our actions from before that just keep us beaten down, that make us feel like we're not good enough, that, you know, the soil isn't good enough, the seeds aren't good enough because I'm not good enough. 
You know, have you ever heard the expression that, oh boy, they're just a bad seed? You know, and, and that, that's not true. Because God can take that bad seed and make it new. God can take that, that un, unplowed soil and make it the right soil. And so I think it's really important for us to understand that God can bring the change that we need in order to keep moving forward in our faith. So we can't do much to change the harvest that you're reaping now, especially if you're, if you're new in your faith. But if you pray and if you ask God for help and forgiveness, and that's what I talked with Jesse yesterday. I, I, we, we talked about forgiveness. We talked about prayer. And I told him, man, every day you get up, you come to God, and you say, God, I need your help. God, I surrender. That was the big thing. Because he said, I struggle with surrender. I said, Jesse, then get up and pray every morning. Nobody else has to know about it. God, I surrender. God, I surrender. Today, I surrender to you. And the more you begin to focus on that specific and intentional, the more God will bring about the change that, that, um, that needs to have happen that you desire in your life. So God's not always going to eliminate that tough harvest, though. And he sometimes will use it to motivate you to do a better job of being more specific and more intentional, to do a better job of, of preparing the soil, to do a better job of bringing the right seed in order to bring about that change. But he changes our life by empowering us to sow seeds of the Spirit in our life today. You know, when we can't do anything about this year's harvest, but if we can change next year's, the old Proverbs comes to life when it says this. The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. The second best time is today. You know, there were several years ago that I was looking at planting avocado trees, and I thought, oh, it takes five years for an avocado tree to, to come into fruition. Well, if I would have planted an avocado tree back then, I'd be, maybe this year, I would be able to see avocados being grown. But because I didn't want to um, invest that that seed and, and allow it to take the time to, fru to grow into fruition and grow, I'm, I'm out of avocados now. I still got to go to the store and buy them puppies for, you know, $2.50 a piece. Well, I could have had a tree and be pulling those things off. So what was that again? The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, and the second best time is today. It's time to start sowing different seeds so that you can reap a different harvest. What do you want to reap in your life next year? What do you want to reap now? It's only possible if you start sowing for it today. We reap in a different season than when we sow. Keep that in mind. No harvest comes the moment the seed is planted. It has to wait until God's appointed time. You see, we can't harvest what we don't plan. My prayer for you this morning is that you will plant the right seed in the right soil in order that we might have the right harvest, bringing fruit into our lives, fruit of change, strength, faith, growth, and development, reflecting Jesus in everything we do and everything we say. God bless you this morning. We just want to pray with you. And, and if, um, if, if you're struggling in this aspect of your life, would you text to that same number, 408-547-4911, the word harvest? Would you text the word harvest to us? And I'd love to follow up with you and see how we can get you headed into a season of growth in your life. God bless you. And hopefully you'll be able to join us during the, the uh, services, or on the in-person services throughout the month, but especially on the 29th as we have a um, celebration service planned for the harvest. God bless you. Thank you for being with us this morning. Again, if you have a prayer request, let us know by texting prayer to 408-547-4911. Or if you'd like to give, please text the word give. And we certainly can use your, your faithful support and your generosity as we head into the final months of, the new, of this year. 
and we appreciate you um, trusting us in that, and God bless you, and let us know how we can come alongside of you to support you and to help you in your faith journey. Thank you. falls it won't breathe it cause the God I serve knows only how to try my God will never fail no my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Belongs to you, Lord. 